We are here at TTEC with uh, James Wagner Au, Hamlet Au, uh, the first Second Life uh, journalist and the uh, uh, best known Second Life journalist who has just uh, given a great uh, talk about why doesn't Second Life go away already. Uh, so, uh, what did you say? Well, I sort of went back from the beginning of when the hype uh, Second Life backlash started and kind of tracked how that happened and you know talked about what all you know the hype that started with like the Business Week article and then talked about how uh, a lot of the hype and the backlash kind of misses the big picture and you mentioned there are three principles that you kind of abstracted yeah that you think define the reasons why Second Life is so important for many people right why it works too and, and so the first one is uh, a uh, mirrored flourishing and what I mean by mirrored flourishing is the expectation and the assumption that what you do in Second Life can and should benefit you in the real world so your activity either creating content or being a member of the community should have positive effects in, in the real world so that's one of the principles the other principle is uh, mir uh, bebop reality so I'm saying Second Life has kind of like it's like a 3d virtual jazz so it's like uh, jazz done in three dimensions and you're building and you're riffing off of other people's projects and you're riffing off their identities and so that's kind of what second life looks and feels like it feels like uh, improv impro improvised jazz and so third one is second life is an impression society and what i mean by an impression society is second life is not a capitalist society or a hedonist society if you're going to say it's one specific thing it's impression and impression in two senses of the word, impress, you know, impressing people with the cool content that you can make. Really, a, you know, that's the gold standard, not how much money you can make, but you know, the talent and creativity that you bring to, bring to the world. And the other imp way I mean impression is longevity, like you know, you, how, how much of a sustained impact and interactivity are you going to have in Second Life? Because that's how people know whether you're serious or not about being part of the world. You have also just finished a book that uh, has just came out. Tell us a little bit more about that. Yeah, so my new book is called The Making of Second Life, Notes from the New World. And it's a combination of what I learned when I was a contract writer for, for Linden Lab, the company, when they hired me to be an embedded journalist, and kind of what I learned after I left the company, and also what I learned talking with Philip and some of the other main creators, Philip Rosedale, uh, about Second Life and what they want out of it. So, like at the end, he starts really talking about uh, Second Life kind of eliminating the need for God and religion and things like that so you know we could go you know I don't I'm not necessarily agreeing but uh, it's a very interesting way of looking at it um, Second Life of course is just one of the metaverses and uh, there are now several online worlds uh, some of them are for games other are for uh, enterprise use yeah uh, so what is your take uh, will we see interoperability convergence uh, um, I don't think uh, the two of us uh, uh, doubt that uh, uh, 3D persistent worlds are here to stay. However, yeah. uh, their variety is probably confusing to many uh, of those who don't observe it day to day. Yeah, and I think the open source aspect is going to happen it just because it, like now there's so much pressure to do it because the, this open source, like the Open Sim project I mentioned, some of these other ones, they're happening without uh, Linden Labs involvement at all and they're going to have to open source their servers to, to recognize these developers and have them involved in Second Life's growth and also as I mentioned in the talk just that a lot of companies want that so because they want to control their own data so just the market I think is going to force this open sourcing to happen also like you mentioned there's a lot of different types of metaverses and people like you know one type or the other and so they're going to want those options to go back and forth. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yeah.